speak about the um, digital camera data. Uh, here's a sample of a picture, uh, an image we took over um, Boulder uh, at one year, and you are right there. That's Neon headquarters in the classroom. Uh, the this uh, image has been orthorectified, and the ground uh, uh, distance is about uh, 800 by 600 meters, and this is a 10 centimeter resolution. All right, the camera itself, it's a, the camera back is made by phase one. You can see the number of pixels. At best, it can take uh, one frame every two seconds. It's got a forward motion compensator so that uh, as the plane is flying along at 100 knots, uh, it minimizes the blurring on the ground. The output format of this camera is uh, something called IIQ. It's proprietary to phase one, meaning in order to actually deal with the really raw images, you need to use their software called Capture One. Uh, which is free to use for this particular uh, image format. And the nominal resolution when you're flying at 1,000 meters above ground level is 8.5 centimeters for the raw data. All right, so what do you use the camera imagers for? Well, it's a complement to the spectral data. On the um, left here, you see uh, spectrometer data, we selected three bands, 52, 34, and 18, and they mimic RGB. Okay. Uh, it's difficult to see what you're looking at on the ground. Over on the right, we see the camera image, uh, coincident camera image, and you can see that there are roads, your trees, shadows, and then right here, well this by the way is San Joaquin, Right here is the central tower, San Joaquin Central Tower. Uh, you notice that it looks like it's falling over at 45 degrees. Well, obviously it's not. Well, that's an artifact of the fact that you're at 1,000 meters above ground. And this is over toward the edge of an image, so it's distorted. All right, in operations, it's coincident, it's coincident with the spectrometer. We have about a 50% overlap long track, 33% cross track. Nominally, the frame rate is about four images per second. And each site, we may collect between 2,000 and 11,000 images over several days. Well, there are three major steps to processing. The first one is to adjust the color balance and exposure. And since the images may be taken uh, on different days and on the same day uh, over a period of several hours where conditions change, uh, you may have to adjust the color balance and exposure uh, separately over, different, over the time period. The uh, second step is orthorectification. You have to remap the image from the uh, camera frame to a regular fixed grid on the ground, the same grid that the spectrometer is uh, projected on, except that it's at 10 centimeter resolution, not one meter resolution like the spectrometer. And finally, mosaicing. Uh, like I said, you could have 11,000 images over one site. Uh, mosaicing takes all those images, overlaps them, and creates one single image. We, uh, and then, because the single image is so large, you subdivide that single mosaic image into separate tiles, which are one kilometer on a side. All right, pre-processing. Um, you can see on the left a raw image. On the right, process image. We try and uh, make it appear as close to what you would see if you were actually up there looking down. 
And as I said before, you may have to adjust these separately. It can be a very tedious process. Orthorectification. We remap from the camera frame down to uh, a regular UTM grid on the ground as shown on the, the picture. Uh, and to do this, <coughs> we require several other pieces of data. One is called the smooth best estimate of trajectory. We get that from the LIDAR. And that tells you exactly where the plane is at any second and exactly how it's oriented, the roll, pitch, and yaw. And from this, we can trace uh, any line of sight from the camera down to the ground and also from the LIDAR we get a digital elevation map, a DEM, and that's this uh, the grid you see there. So we shoot a, a ray down from each camera pixel down to the ground and see where it intersects the DEM and then project that down to this uh, UTM grid. We also need a camera model which uh, describes the distortions in the camera image due to the lens and also the offset of the camera itself from the LiDAR bore sight. Uh, here's an example of a, an image before orthorectification. This is a raw image, but after um, the pre-processing. And over here, it's been orthorectified. The plane wasn't going exactly north-south. And you can see on the sides here where there's curvature on the side of the image. And that's due to the uh, uneven ground surface. Now, the orthorectification process introduces other distortions. Uh, and that's because of a mismatch between the camera resolution, which is half a tenth of a meter, and the LiDAR uh, DEM resolution, which is one meter. So you get straight, oops, here's an image of an um, intersection, and you can see here where these straight lines are uh, distorted, and that's because of trees and poles nearby, which uh, the DEM, again, has one meter resolution, so it may trace a ray down to the top of this tree, but it really belongs here. Over here is the very, over on the right is the very edge of an image, uh, in, in where the, you're seeing the uh, tree canopy, and you see a lot of swirls in the tree canopy, again, you're seeing partly to the ground, partly to the top of the tree. So you get these artifacts that look kind of weird, especially when you compare them to, say, a satellite image where the line of sight is very nearly vertical and you don't see this kind of distortion. Finally, mosaicing. A single survey will produce between 2,000 and 10,000 images. And so a, a mosaic and combines all these into one image. Okay, and from all these overlapping images, you select the, pic, uh, the pixel with the smallest zenith angle, the most, verti the most vertical angle, to minimize the distortion that we talked about earlier. And the result is a set of, and then you tile it into a set of images which are one kilometer on a side and you can end up with between 100 and 450 of these tiles. Uh, now one ongoing issue is how do you blend these images from different days or different times of day with different uh, solar uh, zenith angles into something that uh, looks uniform. Uh, you'll see that in a bit. All right, here's an example of uh, a measurement we made earlier this year. Here is the full mosaic, including all the different uh, images. And over here is one tile from this mosaic. You can see along here these uh, seams, and that's because you're taking different 
images with slightly different lighting conditions, and it shows up as these boundaries. All right, now, how do you deal with 11,000 images or 450 tiles? In order to deal with all these, we have created a, um, a KMZ file, which you can load into Google Earth. Here is a picture of, uh, this is um, Google Earth centered over the neon hangar at Boulder Airport, about two miles just north of here. <clears throat> so we created uh, these things, KMZ files, and here's an example of San Joaquin of this year. And if you load it into Google Earth and then double click on it, Here's what you see initially. And this purple boundary, the extreme purple boundary, is the limits of a, a digital elevation map that we use for processing. But um, let me turn that off. You'll see this other purple boundary. And that's the limits of the actual DEM from the LIDAR. We've included all this other area, but that's from uh, a USGS DEM at 8 meter resolution. We just use it for filler, uh, and it's, it's necessary for some, some of the analysis. If we blow it up, you'll see that there, there's some interior portions outlined in purple and that's where there's no good LIDAR data. So this has also been filled with the uh, USGS DEM. Typically, you'll see that over water bodies where you don't get a decent LIDAR return. But the water bodies are flat, so there's not, uh, no features there to, to see. you also see here the location of the central tower. All right, then if you click on mosaic tiles, this shows you the location of each tile. So suppose you're interested in the central site. Blow it up there. If you click on the tile, it gives you the name of the file that uh, corresponds to this tile. And the name consists of the year, the site, San Joaquin experimental range. The two is the second visit we have ever made of San Joaquin. We went there once before, or I forgot what year. And these two numbers here are the universal transverse Mercator locations in meters uh, of the lower left corner of the image. And that's just the way they're named. It's, it's for something else. But so um, so that's if you're interested in this area, this tells you how to find this tile. You can also go over to this button, and that shows you the location of each individual image. So like this one, number zero four nine nine. Is there, if they click on it, it gives you the file name of that image plus the exact location, the altitude, and the heading of the plane when it uh, took the image. Uh, and then finally, there is a five meter resolution browse image. This is taken from the mosaic, but at reduced resolution because uh, it's just too big. This, image by itself is already 10 megabytes. And this gives you a sort of overview and perspective of what you're looking at. And it includes things like uh, where go? cloud shadows. And you can also see those boundaries between individual images. So 
And one more feature of, of Google Earth. Now, this is Google Earth Pro. And Google Earth Pro is now free for anybody to use and download. Um, Google isn't going to support it anymore. But you can still get at it and use it. So one feature of Google Earth Pro is that you can actually take some of the, well, let's go to this tile here. It's tiled 257411. We go over here to the actual images and find that one. And there it is, 257411. <coughs> ah, lost it again. We drag that into Google Earth. Now the problem is this image is too large to fit into Google Earth. So you've got two choices. You can either look at the whole image and scale it down in resolution, or you can crop it so you get full resolution over a limited area. So let's crop it and center it right on the tower. And again, here's that tower we saw in, at the very beginning, plus the roads, trees, and so forth. And this is just an aid to locate things of interest. And again, you could do the same thing with, uh, you can scale it. There's this also create super overlay, but don't, don't push that button. This is that. <laughs> That shows you the full image, again, at reduced resolution. 